Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to a, another episode of Sea Salt Snippets. Today for you guys, we have some spicy topics to talk about, so without further ado, let's just dive straight into it. First off for today, we have a brand new art illustration for Kingdom Hearts 3 that was revealed over on the Japanese Kingdom Hearts Twitter account yesterday to celebrate Halloween, as currently the spoopiness is upon us, folks. Now, this was actually drawn out by the art director for Kingdom Hearts 3, known as Dago. Tsukata and it looks so damn cool. It's in a bit of a different style than we're usually used to seeing for Kingdom Hearts art, but it looks really, really cool. It's quite reminiscent of sort of the like Kingdom Hearts Union Cross slash Unchained Key art style a little bit. But as we can see, it's Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora surrounded by many of the different enemies that we're going to be coming across in Kingdom Hearts 3 itself. Mainly, of course, consisting of the Heartless, but we do have a Nobody thrown in there as well as a few of the Unversed. Now, so far, all of these different enemies are ones that we've seen throughout the many different Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers. At the bottom left, we have the Harpoon sort of fish man Heartless from the Pirates of the Caribbean world. We have the Possessor-esque looking sort of puppet Heartless, which is present in the Toy Story world. We have the sort of mini boss Heartless known as the Rock Troll, which is going to be in the Olympus world as well as the Frozen world. We have this little futuristic looking flying Heartless thingamadoo, which is part of the Big Hero 6 world. In the back here we can see the sort of soldier-esque Greek Heartless which is from the Olympus world. Taking up a lot of space in the back is the Dragon Heartless boss from the Pirates of the Caribbean world. We have which is one of my personal new favorite nobodies, the Scythe nobody from the Tangled world. We have good old big bad Mr. Wolf over here which is one of the boss Heartlesses from the Frozen world. We have this big ugly unversed frog looking thing uh, which is actually from the Monsters Inc world. We have the rare pudding Heartless down the bottom right of the artwork looking really kawaii. We have the Mr. Fish Unversed who is from the Monsters Inc world. The Taurus Heartless which is from the Olympus world. The very cute looking deer Heartless which is from the Frozen world. We have the Ice Waven Heartless which is from the Frozen world. Also to the top right of the artwork we can see the little flying Heartless thing which is part of the Pirates of the Caribbean world. We can actually jump on these as Sora and fly in mid-air to help us take down that big bad looking dragon Heartless boss. And last but but certainly not least, we have the Gigas Robot Bang Smack in the middle. So like I said, these are most of the enemies in Heartless that we have seen so far and that are of course new to that of Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm sure that there is going to be a lot more enemies a part of the enemy roster when it comes to KH3, but really, really cool nonetheless. Absolutely love the aesthetic and style of this artwork. Diego Tsukata has done an absolutely amazing job. Happy Halloween, everyone. Next up, we have some more information about the upcoming special Kingdom Hearts 3 panel happening this Saturday, November 3rd at Luca Comics and Games. We've been quite excited about this for quite some time, mainly because this is hosted by Shinji Hashimoto, who is, of course, the co-director of the Kingdom Hearts series. And because of that reason specifically, a lot of us are led to believe that there is going to be something pretty substantial that will come out of this panel. It's not too often that Shinji Hashimoto is the one to actually host the Kingdom Hearts 3 panel, but even more so, it's not too often that we even get Kingdom Hearts 3 panel. Panels. Now we actually know how long this panel is going to run for. It will run for a total of 1 hour and 30 minutes, which this would probably go down as being one of the longest Kingdom Hearts 3 panels we've had. If we actually look back at Tokyo Game Show, which happened in September, we had two Kingdom Hearts 3 panels that happened there. Now both of those ended up running for about an hour long, and for specifically both of them, we actually got a decent amount of new stuff, especially the first one that was hosted by the Japanese VAs of both Sora and Aqua. Obviously, out of that panel session, we got to see the uh, crazy fight between Sora and Aqua, in amongst a lot of other really cool stuff as well. So because this is even longer than those previous ones, and the fact that it is actually hosted by Shinji Hashimoto, boys, get your nipples ready. I think they're about to get rubbed. I'm serious. I feel like there's going to be some pretty spicy stuff that's going to come out of this weekend's panel. Now, as of right now, I know the burning question is, is 
is this panel going to be getting live streamed? As of right now, there is currently no word towards if the panel will be getting live streamed or not. And I think if it was, they probably would have already made a big deal about it and would have already have let us know. So personally, I don't think it will end up getting live streamed. However, there is always the hope of one of the attendees flicking onto their phone and using something like Periscope or some sort of other live streaming app uh, to live stream the panel. Now, that is on the contrary that there is no uh, sort of restrictions towards filming. Obviously, if there is, that means that us as the outside audience probably won't get to hear anything about the panel until the panel has officially ended. Now, obviously, if there is something pretty substantial that ends up coming out of this, and I'm mainly leaning towards, you know, new information, uh, you know, new images, perhaps maybe even a new trailer, we will likely hear about it once the panel has finished on social media. Also not to mention, the current promotion and advertisement for Kingdom Hearts 3 currently at Luca Comics and Games is sort of insane. As you guys can see from these images, Images. Like, it seems to be that Square are going all out for this event, especially seeing a massive kingdom key just sort of sitting there. Yeah, I feel as if something pretty big is about to go down. I'm extremely excited about this though. I wasn't really expecting uh, anything to kind of happen throughout November, more so December was what I was sort of betting on with a jump fest coming up then. Uh, but of course, we have known about this for quite some time. It is being hosted by Shinji Hashimoto, and it does go for an hour and 30 minutes minutes. So yeah, I definitely feel as if Square have something pretty cool for us in store. And last off for today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about Kingdom Hearts the story so far, seeing as it released very recently on October 30th. This is the ultimate Kingdom Hearts bundle, which includes all of the Kingdom Hearts games thus far, obviously not including Union Cross, but all of the Kingdom Hearts games thus far for a very cheap price of 40 US dollars. Now, I cannot stress this enough. Uh, this is definitely value for money, uh, keeping in mind that you get like, what, six games, uh, three movies for the price of 40 US dollars. Quite literally, uh, this is the best way to jump into Kingdom Hearts if you are a person who is looking to jump into the series. So if you guys do have any friends out there that are looking to sort of experience the Kingdom Hearts games, understand the story before Kingdom Hearts 3 releases early next year, tell them to pick this up. $40, again, value for money, people. But there's actually an interesting little uh, error on the box art right here, as much as it looks glorious with all of the details Telling. Oh my god, I, I need it. It's exclusive to US. Why? I, I need it! But yeah, no, there's an interesting little error on the box art right here. If we look towards the 2.8 portion of the cover art right here, you guys will notice that there is an interesting little sort of yellow slash white smudge uh, next to the character art for Aqua. Now, there's been quite a bit of discussion surrounding this, with some people saying that Square Enix has intentionally done this and put like a little sort of uh, mark or dot there to signify that Aqua is, is on the brink or edge of, well, utter dark destruction, which as we've seen from recent Kingdom Hearts 3 footage, this is absolutely correct. But no, I don't think that this is intentional by Square more so. I feel as if this is some sort of an error. Obviously in the normal 2.8 cover art, uh, this little sort of smudge isn't actually there. So yeah, I feel as if it is some kind of a mistake. Also the story so far, interestingly enough, has a reversible cover. So on the back side of the cover, we can see the remix box arts all very nicely transitioned to together. So of course if you want to sort of fold it inside out, put this on display, you know, put it up on your mantelpiece somewhere, up on a, a shelf of, of some sorts and just kind of stare at it in all of its glory, yeah, you can do that. But other guys, with all that being said, that is pretty much going to do it for today's episode of Sea Salt Snippets. Hopefully you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day. In the comment section down below, please share your thoughts and opinions. However guys, with all that being said, I'm Cynical and until next time, I'll catch you later. Peace. Hit him on a page, you'll be coming through stain. Go dead my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Milk crank, gaming up your bitch though. Catch me in the back, playing Super Nintendo.